Have you thought about buying a home in the near future? If you do and you're working with a realtor, you may be asked to sign a buyer agreement. And there's a very good reason why. Welcome to House Talk on KAFM 88.1 Community Affairs. I'm Kate Porras. I'm a realtor at REMAX 4000. And each month I bring in local experts to provide information for home buyers, home sellers, and homeowners here in Mesa County. Thanks for joining us. So last month, saw some big changes happen in the real estate industry. This was nationwide. It was the result of a lawsuit settlement involving the National Association of Realtors. You may have heard about it in the media. There was some news coverage on it. Um, Some of it, though, that's been reported has left some questions for buyers and sellers. And so I thought, let's delve into that a little bit, get some more information, answer some of those questions. In the studio today with me is Joe Tripoli, managing broker for REMAX 4000. Joe, you have been studying this for months, um, preparing for this lawsuit settlement to take effect, which it did finally here in mid-August. Correct. So talk to me just a brief history of this settlement and what it was all about. So, I mean, really what this settlement was was in reference to compensation for real estate brokers and how that was or was not being um, conveyed transparently. So truly the, the point of this settlement at this point in time is that we can no longer market cooperative compensation on the multiple listing service, which truly was more of a benefit from a transparency standpoint for brokers to be able to relay the information to their clients. But that has that now gone. The other big requirement, and this is the, you know, the primary thing I know we're going to talk about, is you now are going to be required to have a written agreement prior to quote-unquote touring a property or before showing a property to a buyer. So what is a written buyer agreement? Because I know in Colorado we've had different contracts or documents, but in essence, what is a written buyer agreement? What does it mean? What does it do? So really, we're, I think we're pretty fortunate in the state of Colorado that we've got a real estate commission through the Department of Regulatory Agencies that have been very proactive for years and years. And so you've got a couple different ways that this required disclosure can be made. And w- what I want to make clear is that this disclosure has always been required to be made. And so what you're seeing now is the compensation piece coming into effect more so so that the buyers are fully aware, not only as what way are they working with you as their client, right, but also how are they going to be compensated. So in the state of Colorado, two basic documents is how this usually occurs. You have one which is non-exclusive called the broker's disclosure to buyer. Um, It's now a three-page document. In the past, it was a two-page document. And that's where a broker can represent you either as customer or transaction broker. Um, And then you have the more detailed contract document that allows a real estate broker in the state of Colorado to also be your advocate. And that's called the exclusive right to buy listing contract. And in that, that gives them the ability to truly be what's called a buyer's agent. And that comes along with some additional duties that they have to provide to you as the buyer. So I think what's important, a couple of things that you mentioned, but one, first of, all, first of all, is that this, these documents spell out how this buyer is going to be treated by the person, the, by the real estate agent, correct? Correct. And it, and it actually lists, depending on which document you're using, um, if you're using that exclusive right to buy, there's actually a whole section which lists line item duties that this person, if everybody signs this document, this real estate agent is required to do for this buyer. Absolutely. And there's different ways that we can represent people. Correct. So the other big thing, though, that um, this settlement was focusing on, like you said, is the compensation. Because um, for whatever reason, there was some confusion by some people about how real estate agents actually get paid. You know, we go out, we open the doors, we show you this home. They say, I want to buy it. We, you know, talk about price, write up a contract, get it to closing. But sometimes, apparently, people were being confused about how the the real estate agent actually gets paid during this transaction. So talk to me a little bit about what these documents now do and how that is going to be a benefit to buyers. So I think what what you'll see in the updated documents, which is some changes of language that were in the previous documents. They were always there. So in the previous documents where it would say at the very top of it that the, the compensation, or at that point in time it was called commission, now we basically are saying compensation, um, that that was never mandated by law, right? So now that verbiage has changed to that they are negotiable. But what I I hope gets across clear to your listeners is they always have been negotiable. 
And so in terms of how real estate brokers get compensated, it can be a number of different ways, right? You could list a property for sale, right? So you have a contract where you can list the property for sale. You have a contract where you're in essence listing a buyer for sale. But it's, it's, a, it's an agreement between parties of how you're going to perform the duties of being their real estate broker. Again, whether you're on the selling side or the purchasing side. And in that is where that disclosure of compensation is made. And as you said, I think the key thing is this is all, it, it is now and always has been a negotiable amount. 100%. And there's even different ways that it can be paid. Correct. Explain some of those options. Or- so again, and I'm, you know, I'm not trying to be overly biased here, but I, I think we were, were pretty beneficial in the state of Colorado that the documents that we have been provided, the updated documents make it incredibly clear at the end of the contract now, the contract to buy, sell, how that compensation is gonna be paid and by who. So you have three different sections there. You have 29.1, which is the seller is going to pay the buyer brokerage firm. 29.2, the seller, or sorry, the buyer is going to pay the buyer brokerage firm. And 29.3, which is the listing brokerage firm is going to pay the buyer brokerage firm, which is cooperative compensation. So I think, um, I'm glad you brought up this whole idea of who's paying it. Because in the past, and some of what we've heard in in some of these news media reports is, well, sellers are no longer required to pay buyer's agents. Reality was, is they never were required. True story. So um, again, this is just a little bit more clarification so that people, it's spelled out hopefully clearly, hopefully it's not more confusing because there is a lot more language in there now. So you have to make sure that you're understanding what it is. But the whole idea was to try to make this more clear for everybody involved in the transaction of exactly who's going to pay what amount and how that's going to shake down. Correct. And if you're a buyer, I mean, I think some of the, the concern comes from is, well, gosh, now I'm having to sign this document before I can even go look in this house. So it's created, I mean, in reality, like a friction point, right? So if I'm a buyer and I'm signing the brokerage disclosure to buyer, that's a non-exclusive agreement. You do have page three, which is the new page, which fully goes over how the compensation is going to be paid. And then in the exclusive right to buy listing contract, the one that's again, more detailed, right? Also has a very similar section. In fact, some of it's almost identical language. And I think the plus of that, if you're a purchaser, what it does in there is it allows, not only allows real estate brokers, but instructs us to request the compensation either from the seller or from the listing brokerage firm. So unless you as a purchaser says, hey, let's figure this out. Let's just go ahead and figure out what I'm going to pay you. I'm going to pay you. We're not even going to ask the seller or the listing broker to pay in those documents authorizes and instructs us as brokers to request that compensation from another party. You're listening to House Talk on KAFM Grand Junction. In the studio today, Joe Tripoli, managing broker for REMAX 4000. We're talking about some changes that are coming into play now because of the settlement with the National Association of Realtors. Um, I think, you know, one of the things that people are, are feeling like, oh, this doesn't feel right, is now buyers can pay the real estate agent. And I, and I think people for a long time have had it in their head that buyers don't pay the real estate agent, but that's always, again, always been an option as well. Absolutely. Um, and now we're just kind of defining how that actually looks. Yeah. I mean, I hope what, what this will do, I truly do believe this. I hope that what this will do is give everyone the opportunity, meaning the buyers as well as the sellers to have more ability to see when this compensation is going to be figured out is well up front in the transaction and that they'll know not only who's paying who, but what amount is being paid at that point in time. And I think that's a great, great point is that before, you know, a lot of times um, realtors would go show houses with the buyer and then, you know, they'd write a contract and, 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 you know, get it well into the process. And then it was like, wait a minute, wait, who's getting paid and how? Mm-hmm. This is now making this front and center in the beginning because it's actually part of the purchase contract so that everybody knows from the beginning before you're actually under contract to buy a house or sell a house to somebody Absolutely. what it's going to look like. What do you think the best 
the, the most important benefits are out of this? So uh, what I hope the most important benefits are is that the, again, the portion of this that's always been is now just bring more f to the forefront, which is the commissions always have been negotiable, right? I hope that the other part of this is now that you're getting as a buyer some clarity on uh, how am I being represented earlier in the process. In fact, so early in the process that it's truly to be signed prior to touring a property. So when your broker asks you to sign this, the questions that you probably need to be asking is, is this exclusive to you? Because you may say, you know, I'm in the process of interviewing brokers, which you probably should do, okay? So sign these things knowing, is it, what's the compensation portion or amount, and also who and how is this person actually representing you? I think it's a great reminder that, you know, people oftentimes, not just with real estate, but with all kinds of things, we're constantly being asked, hey, sign here, sign here, here's a document. It's important that when you're working with a professional real estate agent, that, that they can explain to you exactly what every line means so that you know exactly what you're signing. Because there's some really good things in here that are going to protect buyers and they're going to help sellers and it's going to make it better. But as long as everybody actually reads the document and knows what they're signing. Yes, please. Absolutely. <laughs> Joe, thanks very much, so much for joining us. If people have more questions, how can they get a hold of you? Uh, so you can get, get a hold of me at the office at REMAX 4000-970-241-4000. All right, Joe, thanks so much for being here. This segment airs on the second Wednesday of each month. You can also listen to podcasts on demand at kafmcommunityradio.org. And make sure to join us next month for another edition of House Talk. If you have more questions for me, feel free to give me a call, 970-985-8555.